All right, guys. All right, guys. So we're gonna start off by wiping down the fender. I got one fender already scuffed, just because I don't gotta show you guys the process of both of them. I only gotta do one, which is a good thing. But um, the holes are already fixed. I remember I told you guys I was gonna use Bondo as well, but I didn't end up using Bondo. I just ended up using pure um, fiberglass resin. On the inside, we have two sheets of fiberglass with four coats of uh, fiberglass resin. And then on the top, filled in the hole with more fiberglass resin and then sand it over it, smoothing it all out. Same as this one. This is what you want the fender to look like once you're done sanding it. We are gonna sand this with 180. The reason I do 180 is so you have a coarse uh, grit for the epoxy to adhere to when it comes time to uh, laying that epoxy. I was gonna start this one tonight, but I still haven't received my um, epoxy dye. So I gotta wait, cause like some of these areas are showing through metal, you you want it all nice and uh, black under. So none of the, like say, like the silver spots show through the weave or if it burns through on the corner or something, you won't see the metal, you'll just see black. It'll be easier to blend out. So yeah, we're gonna start with this one by sanding this one with 180 grit. All right guys, and just like that, I know I shouldn't be sanding with my Evo in here, it's gonna get real dusty, but it doesn't move, it doesn't drive, and I don't feel like pushing it in and out today. It is late at night, so it's just gonna stay in here, I guess. But I got this fender sanded. Remember, you gotta get in that edge is real good. And here, it looks like I gotta get some more. And then for the top, I'm not getting all the way down. I'm gonna just get to that edge, sand down past that edge a little bit because I don't wanna, I'm gonna leave the, the paint that's already in there. So I don't have to add epoxy all the way down here. And since it has the matching vein, I don't wanna rip that off. Make sure you sand it down here good so you can um, wrap down the carbon. You don't gotta do it all the way down here, but if you want to, you can. And then for this, I only sand it up to here because the rest of this gets hidden by the side screw. So I'm not gonna make all of this carbon. I'm gonna just make it up to here and then just epoxy the rest. Make sure you get that edge good. Okay. Give it one last check down. There'll be some spots that you'll, you'll have missed the first time, but after you wipe it down, Clean, let me turn off this TV. I didn't realize. But what I was saying is that you will see that some there's some spots, mainly edges, that you miss. Like, look, I just found one right here. Once you clean the whole panel down with like a wax and grease remover, that's when you'll tell everything. But um, I'm gonna go over a little bit more, and then I'll show you guys the next step. It won't be today, but it'll be in the next couple of days when I receive my uh, my pigment dye. So stay tuned. Yes, I did polish my valve cover. It just looked too dull, so. But it's all dusty now because I'm doing this in here. But stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, we are now Three days later since the last clip, we finally got the, um, where did I put it? the epoxy dye. I got two of them. So, seems like a little bit, but I got this on Amazon, by the way. Um, I'm not really too brand specific yet. I haven't found a brand that best suits me or that I like the most yet. But yeah, this is from Amazon. It might seem like a little bit, but you only need a couple drops to actually tint it. We're gonna start off with this fender. I'm gonna clean it down right now. Um, mix up the first coat and then get going from there. Before anything, I'm gonna take this fender inside real quick to cut out the carbon because it's gonna be a little awkward to cut in here. All right, guys, now that they're all taped off in the edges like I was telling you guys, a little bit of room. 
We're gonna do the final cleaning so we can mix up some epoxy. It sits at kilograms, we're gonna change it over to grams. And then today, I guess we're over by this company so I won't be telling you the name of this. And plus I don't get paid for these uh, sponsorships or promotions. There's no sponsorships or anything like that behind my bills. They're all funded by me. But this is a two to one if I remember right. I've had this for a while. Yeah, two to one. We're gonna put it at zero grams. We're just gonna zero it back out. Cause I forgot to put the cup on. And then for both fenders, I think we'll only be using like, I don't know, we'll see ours go, I'm guessing like 30 grams. I was wrong, I mean 37 grams. Let's mix, to make it easier, we're just gonna mix up 50. And then we'll put 25 grams hardener. Okay, so I got a little bit more than intended. I'm not gonna try to put the five grams that it needs. So. It's at 55 grams. I'm probably not gonna get the five, the five grams. I'm probably gonna overdo it. So I'm gonna just leave it like that. And then I'm gonna put in 27, 28 grams in here. Closer to 28. We're gonna zero it back out again. Now we're gonna do 27.5 grams of hardener. If we can get closer to that, would be great. This doesn't give me the point numbers that I need, so it'll be a little bit of a guessing game. 28 grams. A gram more, 0.5 of a gram more of hardener than I wanted to. And before we put the actual dye in, I like to mix this up. For this, you're trying to get the least air bubbles as possible, but it's just hard. So I like to go back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes when you go in circles, it creates a lot of bubbles. So I try to avoid that. And I move it to one side of the cup, mix back and forth, back and forth. I like to scrape against the side of the cup. And then I switch to the other side, scrape all that off, and then back and forth. Back and forth. Should be good enough for now. I'm still gonna mix it up with the dye in there. I'm gonna shake it up as best I can. Real hard to mix this, but. You want to make sure you got a good pair of gloves for this. All, all we're going to do now, use the cheapest brush you can find because either way the bristles are going to come off. It's the first stage so it doesn't matter but still you want, you don't want that much um, trash in it. If it does, you're going to have to sand it down, get it smooth so you can lay that, um, that carbon weave down. 
you don't need a lot, a lot goes a long way. I mean, a little goes a long way, so. All right, guys, and just like that, the epoxy's laid. It does have self-leveling features, so it does smoothen out quite a bit. This one did get some of the um, some of the loose bristles from the brush, but it got some runs in it. I'm a little bit worried about when we go lay down the carbon if you're gonna see that. I hope not. Um, I'm gonna let it cure a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and like smoothen it a little bit more. But as, as you can see, it almost fully covered up that. Um, I'm not too worried about getting a second coat on it just because of how heavy it laid. All right, guys, so it is now 12 a.m. So a whole six hours later, like I told you guys, it is cold. It's, you guys hear that? It's to the point where it's getting really sticky. It's not 100% tacky how I want it to be. Check right here. No, yeah, it's good. We're good. Okay, maybe I should flip the fender. Gloss on. <laughs> Anyways, my camera died when I was putting the first coat of epoxy after I layered it. I haven't actually seen what part is the most you guys seen. GG, just go outside, come on. Yes, sir. But I have to go back when I'm editing the seat, but I don't know what was the last part you guys saw, but this is three coats later. I didn't get to trimming because on this one, I had started trimming before it actually hardened up and my scissors just completely lost their sharpness. So I did it. Um, I would have loved to cut this down so I actually fold it and tuck it, but oh well. Um, I'm gonna show you guys now the trimming process. I went ahead and got the trimming process done on the first one just because I'm gonna show you guys both of them. But obviously it's gonna look terrible because you still have all that texture on it. But here's the first one. Still gotta cut out the side marker line, you know, still gotta do some final trimming, but. That's just the first trim, just to get all that extra carbon out the way. All right, guys, so uh, for these, make sure you have a good pair of scissors, some shears, especially because you let that epoxy harden right here. So it's gonna be tough to cut. I got these from uh, Marshall Mathers. I got it from, uh, uh, I get confused if it's Marshall's or uh, Michael's. You can talk for I'll edit all the shit out. <laughs> do, do you do you do you anyways? Oh it's on food. <laughs> no, I'll put it.
then we're going to dremel with a small disc on it and trim off all the excess. <coughs> Not much I can tell you guys about cutting this other than good luck and get comfortable. Whether you gotta move it this way, move it that way, because there's no easy way to cut it. It's messy, it gets all over you, and it's itchy. So check out the rough cut. Obviously, I still gotta sand it down, put it in the slide. Obviously, I still gotta sand it down smooth and then button. That's the rough cut. I'm still gonna sand all this down, you know, get it all smooth. Forgot to cut this, let's cut that real quick. Thank you.